We've reached the finale of our 12 teams in 12 day series. Mr. Broyles, along with Mr. McDonald here, taking a look at preseason CA football favorite New Hampshire. Last year, Tim, this team reached the playoffs for an FCS best 10th season in a row, advancing to the semifinals for the first time in school history. The bar has been raised even higher heading into 2014. Which is hard to say because you look at the way that season ended last year. At the start of the year, Bob, and, and you know, at the start of October, really, this mm -hmm. team was one and three, sitting with a loss to Towson, and really regrouped, finished six and one down the stretch, made it to the playoffs, and, and ran through some pretty good teams in the playoffs. Had to beat Maine twice. They beat Lafayette at home. They go to southeastern Louisiana and beat a very good Lions team. Mm -hmm. Of course, you run into North Dakota State. Uh, yeah. Things changed a little bit. I think that you know that that the season really came to an end uh, harshly there, but still, a lot to learn on and a lot to build on. It's tough and crazy to think about that this team really, you know, you're technically one win away from an All CA football championship in Frisco, which mm -hmm. would have, you know, I, I don't think you would have survived. I would have yeah, been fine. You would have been. been oh, you would have been. I would have been going crazy. You know, just look at this New Hampshire offense. Um, a lot of times we think of New Hampshire, you know, everyone thinks of the high flying. It's really a, an offense last year that was built a lot about the run. Um, you third in rushing offense in the CAA, 192 yards per game. They bring back a 1,000-yard rusher this year, Nico Stretti. Stretti is the first 1,000-yard rusher for New Hampshire since 2002. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. This was a good rushing team last year. I think that's going to be one of the keys this year. Again, uh, th they bring back Stretti. They bring back a kid in Dalton Crossan, who I think is going to have a really big year for them. Mm -hmm. Defensively, you know, they also return eight starters. So this is a team, it's, it's not like this is another New Hampshire team. This is a team with eight starters returning on both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a, a really interesting year for this team and how they handle being the preseason pick. Because again, New Hampshire has never really dealt with being the preseason favorite in CA yeah. football. At mm -hmm. least since I've been around. I know. Yeah. You, you no, know. no, I agree. It's you know they've always been in the top four, but never yep. the top number one. Here is head coach Sean McDonald talking about the importance of balance on both sides of the football. Well, I, I don't know if we, we look for you know obviously on offense over the years we've been very good. And you know we're always you know about scoring points and, and, and doing the things we need to do to score points. I think we were balanced offensively last year because of Storetti, because of Setian, um, you know, in our receiving cores in Golden Valles. You know, I think we have that kind of thing. Harold Spears, our tight end, we got enough guys we can get the ball, we can distribute it. You know, uh, we got a young kid Cross, and I think is going to be a very good football player in this league. You know, he was good last year, productive. I think he's going to get more chances this year. He'll be better um, defensively. You know, we we lost three or four players that are just chemistry guys that, that were great leaders and great players, but more importantly, that kept people together on the field. Those things are what's important to keep a balance and keep keep yourself. If you're there in top five each league in this league, you're gonna be you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be pretty good, I think. One weapon on the offensive side we didn't discuss is UNH's dynamic receiver, R.J. Harris. He is a Walter Payton Award watch list candidate and has had a tremendous career in Durham. Look at uh, over the last two years, he's been a 1,000-yard receiver. Even despite missing three games last mm -hmm. year, he still finished with over 1,000 yards and five touchdowns. You just think about uh, R.J. Harris and his career. He's going to enter his senior year as the second time, the second all-time at UNH in career receptions with 210. It's a lot of catches mm -hmm. over a course of a yeah. career. And the, of course, the person ahead of him is David Ball, who's you know one of the greatest FCS receivers of all time. H Harris is a kid I think um, who we've seen him when he's healthy and when he's ready to play. He's one of the best receivers in this conference, which is saying a lot. You know, you, he gets the comparison to Trey McBride and Stephen Barnett. I like to think he brings a little bit of both of those players and, and their traits into that. Yep. Especially you see when he gets in open space, uh, he had, even had success rushing the ball. UNH, uh, obviously, Goldrich, that's Sean Goldrich, the quarterback, is probably going to be the starter for the whole year. That's going to be his favorite, favorite option. But the thing I like about R.J. Harris is that he also brings a... Uh, he brings, opens up the offense for a lot of other players. You look at Harold Spears as a tight end who almost had 500 yards last year, four touchdowns. Mm -hmm. You look at other players like Jimmy G and Sante, who's going to need to step up this year at the receiving core. So this New Hampshire offense, uh, you know, RJ Harris and Sean Goldrich are going to run the show, but I think it also gives this team a lot of chances to open up the offense for the rest of the players. Coach McDonald once again talking about his stud receiver. Well, RJ has, has some talent, and he's a very talented kid. And... Um, He's improved every year in, in, in his understanding of what the receiver position is right now. He's got to continue to work hard. He's got to continue to understand where he fits in the system and keep playing. Um, you know, we've had some great receivers over the years, and he's really close to the rest of the guys that we've had.
Coach McDonald's squad hopes to extend its impressive streak and make it 11 straight years in the postseason. Peeking ahead at the Wildcats' 2014 schedule, I notice a road contest at Richmond on September 20th and then a home game versus William & Mary on October 11th, which can be seen on the NBC Sports Network. Yeah, Bob, uh, you know, really two games that I think are going to determine how this team shapes up. It's not going to be one of those questions of if they go to Richmond and lose that game, you know, are they out of the conference race? They mm -hmm. get another shot at William Mary a couple weeks later. It's a really interesting game. Uh, I know even talking about the Richmond preview, we talked about that game. There's going to be a lot on the line early. Remember a lot the last, of points, too. Yeah, <laughs> the last two times these teams have played, uh, 2011 at Richmond, it was 45-43. to 43. UNH scored real late. Uh, 2012, they played again, but that was in Durham. And UNH won 44 to 40. He, uh, you got to expect high flying offense there. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, we know how well William Mary has played against UNH. UNH, you know, last year, even during that run, William Mary was the team who beat them and yep. put them to four losses last year. They shut them out. Mm -hmm. That game is going to be at home, too, on NBC Sports Network, like you mentioned, and it's that's homecoming for UNH. That's going to be a huge game. I really like uh, the rest of the schedule in terms of uh, differences in opponents. Toledo is the opener this weekend. Going to be a really, really tough game. Uh, Toledo's a very good squad out of the MAC. Versus Lehigh, too. We know James Madison is also playing Lehigh. That mm -hmm. Lehigh game is at home in between a bye week. They also play Dartmouth. And, of course, the CA football, the second game, is going to be at Elon, which is going to be great. Mm -hmm. We're going to see Rhodes Stadium yep. for the first time. Overall, you know, you just think about this New Hampshire team. Like I said, how do you handle the emotions? A lot of times when we've talked with UNH players or coaches or anyone from UNH, it's how they learned improvement finishing the season like they did last year, but also knowing, hey, we played a really good NDSU team and the season ended in a harsh way. Mm -hmm. It really gave them a taste of what the upper echelon FCS schools are like. Once you get over that, that hump of the quarterfinal, you, you'd like to see them build up on that, and it seems like the Wildcats are pretty hungry to do that. Yep. New Hampshire's season begins on the road, like you said, against FBS foe Toledo on Saturday night at 7 o'clock on ESPN3. Also, Bob, you got to remember, you know, the fans got to see the Who I Am features. Oh, yeah. I got you, don't worry. The last ones. <laughs> From the UNH football players that we met at Media Day, that's Cody Miller and Rob Bowman. Mm -hmm. And you can watch that on our Every Day is Saturday blog. This concludes our 12 teams and 12 day series. But we aren't done no, yet, Tim. Not even close. Not, not even don't close. Even worry it about it. Just, it's just beginning this weekend. Tomorrow we're back for the first episode of This Week in CA Football, breaking down some of the matchups and storylines heading into the opening week of the college football season. For Tim McDonald, I'm Bobby Broyles. We'll see you tomorrow on CAA.TV.